We have breaking news as the Toronto Blue Jays have just shocked everybody as they traded Nate Pearson to the Chicago Cubs. And among relievers the Blue Jays had, Nate Pearson was not the guy Jays fans expected to be traded. And Pearson still has some real upside, and trading him away is a little bit surprising. So I'm going to break down that trade and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. Now, Peter is with us via phone. Peter tuned in. He's dude, grinding from everywhere. He's currently in his car. He's on his phone. Peter, this is literally breaking news. We just recorded another video. Videos are going crazy right now. There's too much stuff happening. This it, Nate Pearson is traded to the Cubs. The return is yet to be exactly specified, but we have a bit of an update on what the return will be, but not the exact players. We'll have that for you later today. But Peter, I gather you here from the phone to get your opinion <laughs> on this. This one is... I. This is the most shocked I've been about a Blue Jays trade in a very long time. Not that it's a huge blockbuster trade, but Nate Pearson's name wasn't even remotely mentioned in any trade talks. No, he wasn't, and this is a very surprising move, but you got to believe that whatever the return is, it must be pretty good because he has five years left of control and obviously electric stuff. He hasn't panned out necessarily in the big leagues, but... For the Blue Jays to pull the trigger on a Nate Pearson trade, a guy who we suspected would be a, a big part of the team going forward, at least in the bullpen, uh, it's it's pretty surprising. Uh, I was not expecting this. I was expecting Chad Green to be the next one to go, and he very well might be the next one to go because the Jays seem to be in a complete fire sale right now. So I... Um, I, I don't know. I have to see the return, and I have to be able to judge it based off of that. But, Nick, this is pretty shocking, and I believe we're hearing word that it's two players Correct. with high upside. Yeah. Two um, players with high upside, so I, I like that. And Nate Pearson was once the top prospect in baseball. Didn't pan out for him, but if he can net the Blue Jays a good return, then I'm, I'm all for it. But, uh, wow, very, very surprising considering – where the Blue Jays' focus was at just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, news is just piling out like crazy. And you can see this here from Fuzzy He's saying he was a true super prospect before debuting with Toronto. And Pearson was that guy. He was a elite prospect. And we mentioned it when talking about Ricky Tiedemann before. We've talked about it ourselves. And the only piece of info we have regarding the return as of the time of recording, and we're going to get this video out like five minutes after the trade dropped, Peter um mike wilner actually with a bit of intel i'm assuming he's at the field at rogers center so he has he asked them um as maybe has some or maybe texted some guy blue jays return for nate pearson from the cubs is quote a double a shortstop and a high a pitcher both with real upside the jays believe they did well in dealing with who five years ago was the top prospect in the game but fell victim to injuries and ineffectiveness and this is at a time where uh, ricky tiedemann just got announced he's having tommy john surgery we have another video loaded up to show you guys uh, very soon as well regarding that but peter it's looking like we're going to get a prospect back two prospects one of which is a double a shortstop with it and a high a pitcher and i did some of my own digging and the only double a pitcher or double a shortstop sorry in the cubs system is their 17th ranked prospect which i again this is not confirmed because we don't know what the package is but if it's something along those lines then um i wouldn't be super upset but dealing a guy like nate pearson is always going to be risky because of his upside and he still throws 100 to 103 miles per hour so it's very very interesting yeah nick i understand what you're saying about the the high upside but no he's no longer a prospect he's sure. 26 years old and i think at this point nate pearson is what he is so the cubs are taking a gamble on a high-end arm talent but nate pearson in terms of upside don't know how much he has left so I, I understand the move from a Cubs perspective. They're they're still trying to go for it, even though I don't think it's a very smart move on their part. They're pretty far out of the race in the NL Central. But um, if the Jays can get prospects of any value for Nate Pearson, guys that can contribute at the big league level better than Nate Pearson can, then I think this is a W trade. I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, Pearson, great talent, guy who was heralded as the – next best thing yeah. and just never panned out that way so hopefully uh he can have some success in chicago and hopefully the jays got back a a return that can uh can be better than what nate pearson provided in his big league career yeah and ultimately he provided not too much but uh 
Peter, thanks for tuning in from the from the car. We'll let you go from there, but I'm going to keep rolling. <laughs> thanks, um, man. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to him. We'll be back for a full video with Peter later. But regarding Nate Pearson, and I want to dive into some more specific things here. And again, shout out to Peter for this. You look at some of his stuff, and again, this video is very... We, we had just recorded two other videos, and the Ricky Tiedemann one is going to go out shortly after this one. We're getting this out right away. But you're looking at Nate Pearson. He's been a guy who, like Peter mentioned, and just... The, probably the bigger, the biggest what if, if he would have stayed healthy in the, in recent memory for the Toronto Blue Jays, just because of the elite arm that he has. And we look at Ricky Tiedemann and the Nate Pearson similarities who got dealt to the Cubs. Like, we don't know what the return is for Nate Pearson, but you're dealing with a guy who, like Peter said, is not a prospect anymore. He's past the phase of being a prospect. He's past the phase of being a young, a super young player who, a pitcher who has, you know, electric upside. There is a chance that they move the Cubs get Nate Pearson. He's electric and he's dominant out of the bullpen. Like you've seen flashes of this year. There is that chance. There's also the chance that maybe they turn him into a starter. There is that crazy chance as well, but there's also the chance that he ends up flaring out. And if you're getting two prospects back, a couple of them with real high upside, specifically the high a pitcher, then you really had to take that while you can get it. And you look at Nate Pearson's stats. I don't have the screenshot for you, but he has a 4.74 high, sorry, 5.69 ERA this season or mid five ERA this year. Um, let me know in the comments the exact stat again. This video is just quick reaction. He's struggling. He's yet to have a successful, you know, sub three, sub four ERA season in the major league. So when you're looking at that, he's been a player who's underperformed at every step of the way for the Toronto Blue Jays. And this is not to hate on Nate Pearson at all. He's he's fought. He's grinded. He really put himself in a position to succeed after those injuries. But because of the injuries, he was unable to sustain himself as a starting pitcher. And maybe just like a Jordan Hicks scenario where Jordan Hicks was an elite reliever. And then he got changed back to a starting pitcher. Once he got, uh, once he signed elsewhere this off season, maybe there's a world where Nate Pearson who still has a few years of control or a couple years of control left. Let me know the exact amount of control in the comments. Um, it's at the point now where He's under control for a couple more years. You have a guy who you just traded away who has control. It's a scary trade. Now, that being said, even though Nate Pearson has control, he has upside. The reality is he's yet to be a successful MLB pitcher. He has not played very well in the major leagues to date. Um, he has yet to be any sort of elite arm that we once hoped that he was. Um, but the issue is with Nate Pearson again has always been his health has always been his ability to really just be healthy and be out there on the uh, on the field and that's the issue with it and if Nate Pearson he actually might only have one year left to control so if Nate Pearson doesn't have a ton of control left whatever the scenario is for his contract it's very rough to think that a guy who was once touted as the highest ranked prospect in the system is now going to be a Chicago Cub of all teams. And the unfortunate reality is this is the, the path that the Jays are going to have to take going forward because if they don't move on from all of these guys and they don't go into a full-on fire sale, then, you know, it's it's it for the team. And yeah, I do believe I just did some checking. It do, does look like Nate Pearson is, uh, this is the last year on his contract. It seems like he was just yesterday a rookie, but now after all this, uh, all this time, he is going to be, uh, he's going to be a free agent soon. So, let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. A very quick video. Uh, this one was, we literally just recorded a bunch. This one wasn't as prepared as usual. So bear with us for that. But um, thank you guys for your continued support. And we have tons more videos in the chamber for you guys coming very, very soon. Thank you guys for watching.